Hey, welcome to Ed, a podcast about the teaching life. This is Conversation 91, and I'm your host, Shane Lawrence. Ed is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. And joining me this week for the second time is Sarah Ann Lalonde. How are you? Hi. We made it. You know what? It's it's like there's March, and I'm wondering if March is ever going to end. Oh. Like a thing in, in teacherhood, like March just never ends. Uh-huh. Okay. I don't know. I'm living it's, it. It seems like it's it's going fast for me. It's going so fast. Really? So, always, second semester always just semester? Semester always just passes and just like a blaze for me. It's so fast. So Well, I like you said, kind of second semester, as much as I find March is 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 crawling. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that or like nearing the end of it because I'll be done my first year sooner than later and I've just kind of been a whirlwind year for me yeah well i mean that's why we're reconnecting here because uh last time i talked to you you were you were just a uh what was that a pre-service teacher not just but you were a pre-service teacher right I yeah think. i i was so young and naive back then oh and and, and now what are you <laughs> Oh, I'm wise and I am I feel like a veteran teacher with all the knowledge I've acquired. <laughs> Battle tested. <laughs> Heck yes. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Not that I've had a lot of, uh, you know, obstacles and hardships and whatnot that I went through, but, you know, just living the, the day-to-day actual mm-hmm. real life teacher role is nothing like you can't you can't be prepared for that when you're in as a pre-service teacher it's just not the same and that Mm -hmm. is what I that's what I realized as of you know the first week of school like and and what to my surprise and to my almost uh not disbelief because I was I was pretty confident that I was going to be okay in all of this but Mm -hmm. I was very happy that I knew that this was a role that I wanted to be in and that I was comfortable and that I was excited for the rest of the year. So was there any sort of time in the year where you're just like, like just maybe second guessing yourself or is it all just like, no, I can, I can do this. I can do this or. Well, it, it wasn't all uh, like rainbows and butterflies for sure. I don't want to say that (laughs) whatsoever, but (laughs) I think, (laughs) I think that the toughest, toughest for sure was November. I think November took a, big hit on me uh-huh. and because we had we had parent teachers we had my first ever report cards I had never done report cards before mm-hmm. I awfully awfully managed my time I had all of this marking to do it was just that's when I asked myself if I actually knew what I was doing and mm-hmm. <laughs> why I had put myself in that position and just just think like thing after thing after thing and, and also preparing my exams I just felt as though being in you know in in high school and then for you in university for six years I was so used to being the student writing the exam when it come to actually creating it and and handing it out Mm -hmm. what a what a role reversal yeah it feels kind of weird to be on the other side of that eh? yeah and then you got to correct them (laughs) yeah yeah okay so so let's um I actually I don't even know what you're doing now so let's kind of go through like your hockey card version of of your career at this point like what what are you doing do you so get the, the hockey right card now, reference? Like if I had your hockey card, what would it say on it? Sorry, that was really bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I don't know. I can, what is what? So, no, what is the Sarah, Sarah Ann Lalonde? Like what does, you know, the, the teacher trading card look like? Well, uh, like right now I mm-hmm. am a grade nine and 10 like high school teacher in mm-hmm. a small village in Ontario, like in Eastern Ontario there where okay. like – about 20 minutes away from Cornwall, about an hour away from Ottawa, just like a, a rural school. There's about mm-hmm. 200 students. And last semester, I taught um, workplace English and workplace French with the same group of students. Mm-hmm. And then I ta- taught an academic history class. And then this semester, I have the same group of workplace students. I'm teaching them history. Mm-hmm. And then my academic history students that I had last semester. I'm now teaching them academic English and I have a new group of um, applied students in geography grade nine. So I'm teaching a variety of subjects, all that I'm (laughs) discovering and learning alongside with students. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also in the um, climat I teach at a French school, by the way. The yep. the only subject that I teach in English is my English classes, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've kind of got hooked up with the student council and also with the uh, like like positive 
climate uh, environment of the school. So those are two kind of committees that I've been dabbling in recently. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's a pretty small school. I mean, you must know pretty much all the kids, I'm going to guess. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how – I mean, the thing I'm most interested in here is because, I mean, I remember talking to you before, you know, and, and you were that, you know, the, the beautiful preschool, uh, preschool, pre-service teacher who is just, you know, you're full of like rainbows and optimism, which is great. I mean, I'm not, I'm not coming here. I, I haven't returned to you this conversation so that I can say like, how hard have you crashed? But um, at the same time, I mean, how have you, how do you find that you've changed? Like, how is your expectations compared with this? How have you, Sarah and Lalonde, uh, transformed throughout the year? Ooh. Big what a question. loaded question, Shane. Why would oh. you do this? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. kidding. No, I love it. I love the. <laughs> yeah. I think that asking me this question is in itself just asking so much reflection, and I, I like having to mm -hmm. kind of dive deeper into myself to be able to to give you something. So, how has have I transformed? Oh, first of all, I think I'm still in discovery mode of who I am as a teacher. So like, even when I spoke to you, like I'm still as passionate and still as optimistic and, and happy as I was. Cause I think that's just a part of my personality and good, good. the reality, <laughs> of, yeah. well, the reality of teaching hasn't like, you know, killed all of my sunshine yet, uh -huh. but again, I haven't finished my first year. So as we'll, we'll check in, in, uh, in June. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think that it comes in waves too. Like, I've had some really solid past few weeks with my groups. And that's one thing that I've learned is just however students are feeling, it, it like reflects on me and however I'm feeling reflects on the students. So I'm always trying to, to exchange energy with them. And that's something in my classroom and that I didn't really expect to lit like to live. So I don't want to say deeply, but the the energy of the classroom really like guides our learning and it's like a big role uh, it's like a big game changer i find depending on even like with the weather outside and how if students are excited and oh, just, yeah. you know if it's like we've had snow days for three days and then we're coming back into class it's like boom mm -hmm. so all of these little things that you don't necessarily plan and prepare for trying to be flexible is probably one of my biggest transformations like I thought that I was a lot more um like on the ball than I actually was as like as a teacher in my subject matter so because I'm teaching subjects that I'm not necessarily like I didn't go to school for geography or go to school for history when mm -hmm. things aren't working and I'm not a hundred percent an expert of you know the content I can't just switch and do something else you know what I mean like yeah I had to be prepared for my classes. I needed to self-teach myself a lot of, you know, the first world war again and the second world war, like all these things <laughs> yeah. that I never thought in the world I would be like having to, to now teach to, you know, to, uh -huh. to high school students. So that's just big, 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 uh, like it was a game changer for me when I got handed those classes and having to, to be flexible and learn and, mm -hmm. oh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just kind of like you have to, you learn it, you know, two days before they do and then you know, present it to them and oh boy. Yeah. Been there. Been mm -hmm. there. In fact, with social studies, I had, I taught social studies for a number of years and it was like, I have no training in this, but here we go. <laughs> Remember I had actually, we had actually spoke, I don't know if it was just email or Google Hangouts at the beginning of the year about history because I was freaking out. Mm -hmm. I was I think another part of the, the transformation or just things that I lived this year was that imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was something I needed to overcome and I needed to build confidence when, when teaching out of my, you know, like subject or content area, yeah. because it, it, like you, you could tell when I was teaching and I could tell too, and students could tell. So that, that has been, a process for sure. So, so how do you deal with that though? When the, when the students can tell that you're not in your comfort zone I and mean, what do you do? Well, I encourage the fact, like at the beginning of the semester, I needed to be open and honest with them. I didn't pretend like I knew what I was talking about as in like, <laughs> I didn't pretend to be the expert because yeah. that would just put me, I would just, I would just dig myself a deeper hole than I was already, than I already felt like I was in. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was vulnerable with them, you know, and I, 
encouraged the the whole aspect of of learning alongside students and when they asked me questions that I didn't know the answers to mm -hmm. we took the opportunity to pause a class let's look it up nice. okay one site says this the other site says this let's see are they credible sources like we took mm -hmm. those moments of almost me being or I could have been just super uncomfortable not knowing mm -hmm. I took those opportunities to make them like teachable moments and I, I, I can like tap myself on the bat for that one because I'm, I'm proud that that is the way it went down, you know? Yeah. Well, I think you're, you've done, you, you've avoided a, a big, uh, I guess I will call it a, a mistake that I think a lot of starting teachers make that, you know, and me being one of them, that's why I'm pointing the finger here. You know, it's that this idea that you feel like you have to know everything and you have to always look like you are the expert. So uh, the fact, I mean, mind you, as a new teacher too, like that's, it'd be scary to open yourself up to the kids. So like kudos to you for, for doing that. Cause I, I, I certainly didn't have the guts when I started. I just, nope, I have to be the paragon of knowledge and, and all things true. This is me. So mm, I think I was just so aware of mm. what I did, didn't know, having read the curriculum through and, and, and looking at the manual and being mm. like, okay, no, I can't, I can't pretend I can't put on this facade. I'm just going to kind of like swallow my pride of <laughs> being the, the know all tell all. And yeah. I'm just, you know, if I flop, then I'll get, I'll get the, I'll get the students to, uh, to teach. And that was another thing, like just talking about the, uh, like learning alongside students. I took a lot of opportunities for students to teach each other mm -hmm. because it was so much more like valuable I found when it was coming from them and they took ownership of the things that they needed to learn and how they were going to present it to their peers. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was huge. And it's so easy in history. Right. And they got to, to decide kind of like what kind of topics interested them and gave them options on how to present it. So it was always just changing it up. Right. Right. So coming out of your, your education world, uh, into the actual practice of education. I mean, what what are some of the things you found that were like that you learned that actually like worked really well for you in this first year? I forget what podcast I was on, but somebody has already asked me this question. <laughs> oh no! Well then, forget it. No, Just go listen to that no, one. <laughs> no, no, no. But Shane, i i have I have a hard time finding an answer for that. Like, oh, yeah? I think okay. it was Rola that asked me on her podcast, like, what did I take from from the faculty, yeah. you know, and, and transfer it into the classroom and maybe some, some concepts on like positive reinforcement and mm. the way that, that students uh, de like develop and different types of learning. Like those are all things that we looked at closely in teachers college that, you know, when we differentiate what types of things can we do for students who are, you know, visual learners or kinesthetic or, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. So I definitely use, Oh, and another thing too, we, um, in teachers college, we made like student profiles, like learner profiles to give to our students at the beginning of the semester. Okay. So I had created a Google forms with like, silly questions like how many brothers and sisters you have are you a night owl or a morning person do you have a job um mm -hmm. on the scale of one to five like where is history in your favorite subject what are your strengths weaknesses what kind of learner are you so all these things mm -hmm. um just to get to know my students more that's one thing that i found kind of gave me an up mm -hmm. like at the beginning of the semester because students really felt like I I was interested in them and I I really was. It wasn't just for fun yeah. that I was giving that yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. questionnaire, but yeah, that that helped me a lot to just have a, a better understanding of the students in front of me. And so, how's that? How's that served you then throughout the year? Like, how do you find your relationships are with your students? Uh, like for me, relationships come first before anything, and that's that's something that I already knew was important to me mm -hmm. because of the professional development that I had done through listening to podcasts through, you know, doing Twitter chats and just um, yeah. like, it, it's kind of like <laughs> obviously relationships are the, the foundation of it all. And I knew that going into September. So I took a lot of time, like probably a full week of just getting to know each other, icebreakers, questionnaires, mm -hmm. games. And luckily I had students from last semester coming into this semester. So I was able to transfer, you know, we had built up all of those really strong bonds 
um, you know, throughout the first semester. So they're just, they, they just keep growing and growing and students know what my intentions are. They know what my expectations are. Mm -hmm. They know that I'm there for them. They know I'm willing to help them. Uh, I'm stern, I'm fair, but I care, I care about them. And that's, Mm. I think that's just the vibe that I get off and something give off. And that's something that I've worked hard to, to have with them right. and thank God, because it's like give, um, give and pull. Is that a, yeah. Give and take. Give and pull. Give and take. Yeah. yeah. So I give, I'm very empathetic. So mm-hmm. today I, I, I gave no homework because they had been working really hard and they had, um, They had a standardized test in language yesterday and it was just, you know, Mm, they had worked really hard. So today I was like, guys, you know what? No homework. And they were so appreciative. And I just, (laughs) I just felt it, you know, and, and that means that they'll probably give me more tomorrow. And, and I love, I love having that, those relationships. Yeah. Just being able to kind of read the room and read the group and yeah, have that, like you said, the give and take, push and pull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you found then your classes, like as your relationships are deepening, how, are your classes changing then or the way you delivering information or, or running your classes is that changing then? All right. We're going to get back to my conversation with Sarah in a minute, but first I want to tell you about this week's sponsor, the Edmonton community foundation. If you live in Edmonton, chances are you've been touched by the work facilitated by the support ECF provides to the city's shakers, movers, and doers as a bridge between donors and charitable causes. ECF helps donors create endowment funds that will continue giving for generations with that kind of support. Those movers and doers can do a lot. They have a podcast too. It's called the Well Endowed Podcast, and you'll hear stories about donors and what inspires their generosity, and you'll hear about the people who use their support to build and sustain social initiatives, empower youth, strengthen arts, culture, and so much more. If you'd like to listen to the most recent episode, check out www.thewellendowedpodcast.com. All right, let's get back to my conversation with Sarah. So have you found then your classes, like as your relationships are deepening, how are your classes changing then or the way you delivering information or, or running your classes, is that changing then? Yes. And today was a perfect example because Ooh. we talked about, um, so in my English class, like I had said, it was students that I worked with last semester in history. So we've already been built a, a, I want to say like a safe space or a class kind of culture where, um, and in your question, you asked like, how has, has the relationship changed? I just find that students are more willing to take risks in the sense of at the beginning of the semester, last semester in history, you know, I would ask a question and it would be silence and, you know, one Mm -hmm. student would raise her hand and then just as the, as the year is going on, students are more willing to take risks of getting the wrong answer. Just that is a huge, huge win for me Um, and doing different things in, in their projects. And anyways, in that idea of, of creating a safe space and and being respectful because that's the kind of the golden rule in my class. um, Mm -hmm. We talked about a really sensitive subject today that uh, we see in To Kill a Mockingbird. And I don't know if that, if we could have had the conversations that we did today, um, if we wouldn't have, worked so hard pre you know in the previous months to create you know uh, um, just a space for that conversation so it's allowing us to 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 deepen kind of the discussion and where we're able to take things right. and i think that's a win f- for for everyone what were you talking about well we were talking about the use of the n word in to kill a mockingbird ah um, yeah, so we looked at all of the the the, the history of of that word. We looked mm-hmm. at the social context in the Southern United States uh, with the slavery. We talked about the civil rights movement, just like tons of things. And I think uh, coming, you know, especially coming from a, a rural school that has not much diversity, it yeah. was just important to to educate students um, on that. And also, just it, it was cool. Yesterday, when I was doing some research, like "To Kill a Mockingbird" is is banned in some schools because of the oh, yeah. of, because of the language and and the themes and all that. So, anyway, it was a really interesting conversation. And then students wrote a blog post about it and kind of looked introspectively and was able to they were able able to reflect and and share. So, really, a really good day. Yeah, that's and and broaching those kind of subjects is is always interesting, but almost always as well difficult. 
Mm -hmm. It was the first time really that I had taken a dive into a topic set like as sensitive as that this year, hands down for sure. Let's just say I went to bed, finishing up my, the little slides that I did last night. I went to bed with, with butterflies in my stomach. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dreaming about the principal knocking under. I was like, what have you been doing? And mm-hmm. yeah, but right. I had, I, I knew the reasons why I was doing it and I was confident in those and I'm just really happy with yeah. the, with the outcome. Good, good. Do you have like, yeah. I mean, what are, what were some of your, like your, your fears going in? I mean, do, are you still underneath some of that stuff? Um, what were my fears going into the discussions? No, no, no. Sorry. Sorry. Back or, it up. Like it, just teaching in general. Um, was I going to be able to survive as in mm-hmm. like manage my time? Because yeah. like I, I can be such a perfectionist in so many things and I can be, you know, and I'll just list all of my faults on this podcast for you, but you know. well, sure. Yeah. Go for it. Just we'll itemize them. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can be such a perfectionist and I can want to plan to the minute so many things when I've now realized that it's when I don't necessarily play my classes that they go the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the beginning of the semester, I was like making slides every day with like, you know, the menu and blah, blah, blah. It it was just, it was just too much. So was I going to be able to survive? Was I going to, you know, be able to let go of some of the things not being perfect? Was I going to be able to actually deliver content and how was I going to do that? Was I going to be effective? Um, And the whole process of evaluation is still something that I'm that I'm toying with that I'm discovering that I'm learning about is probably mm-hmm. one of my biggest fears going in. Now you're talking about evaluating your students uh, or like you about, being evaluated? Eva- no, 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 evaluating my students. Yeah. yeah. How, well, okay. I mean, I'm I'm uh 15 years in and I'm I'm uh yeah, I'm still all like all a tizzy when it mm-hmm. comes to uh when it comes to evaluation cuz yeah, I mean there's yeah, anyway, I don't want to get into it cuz then I'll start just going off. Uh <laughs> So, so what have you landed on then for, in terms of valuation, let's say, Ooh, if anything, shit. I mean, come on, it's, I know you're like, like, like I don't what, even... seven months in, right? So come on, where's the yeah. answer, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> you're asking the wrong person, but I still have a lot of questions. And thankfully with my, uh, like new teacher program that every new teacher in Ontario has to go through, mm-hmm. uh, I have a mentor that, um, is, is in my school directly. So I, I ask him lots of questions and, and luckily, you know, I got to choose my mentor, thankfully, mm-hmm. and he has a very broad and innovative and just uh, like open way on, on evaluating. And I ask him often how I should go about doing certain things. And he he always likes to answer me with questions, you know, nothing too mm-hmm. concrete to, to get me to think. So yeah. I've been just trying a whole bunch of things and like, again, Am I, have I found my sweet spot in how I want to evaluate my students? No, I do a lot of like, they, they self-evaluate themselves. We do a lot of like Mm check-ins and things that are like formative before they, they, you know, before they actually count. But at the same time in our, in our board, we, we talk about, I don't know if this is the same term in French and in English, but like triangulation. So Mm -hmm. with conversations that you have with the students, with what they produce and what you observe that they can do, that is, that's all, that all fits in your rubric somehow. Mm, I'm still discovering. (laughs) So one thing I've really rocked on this year is, is documenting, um, you know, things that I've seen students be able to do in case Mm -hmm. when it comes to their essay or the test or whatever it is, the project, in case they aren't, you know, rocking Mm -hmm. it that day, I have documentation somewhere that. So you just have like anecdotal, like little notes. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. And I've been using plan board. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I have not. Tell me more. So plan board is made by um, chalk. It's like, I think chalk is the company Uh and they have, um, so plan board is where you can put your um, like lessons uh, for the day, Mm -hmm. but they also have mark board. It's like all in the same kind of 
program. So there's plan board, there's mark board, and then you can do your attendance. And in mark board, it gives you, you like insert all the names of your students, and then you can add different observations, assessments. Mm -hmm. Um, So with every student, I can just click on their name. And then I have a whole list of every day or whatever, every time that I put an entry and it could be just written notes. It could be um, like a homework. It could be an evaluation, whatever. And so that's where I've been documenting, which is fun because last semester I was in between using Google, having a binder, marking things on my phone. It was just everywhere. And I found something that worked very well. (laughs) That's nice. That is very nice. Uh, Mm -hmm. I know like, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what works. (laughs) I switched back and forth. It seems like for a couple of weeks, you know, post-its work great. And then it's like, no, I just want a piece of scrap paper and not going to use Google Keep and uh, but I also am comfortable knowing that that is just who I am. So I'm okay with it. What works is constant change. <laughs> there you go. I wish See, I was as organized as you. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're busy. You're tired. I'm going to guess. Hmm. Yeah. Most of the time. But coffee is a savior. Yes, yes. Well, I made. I remember making that comment on Twitter. It's like every time you post a new profile picture on Twitter, your, your mug of coffee gets bigger. <laughs> Stop it, Shane. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We can go back and look. It's true. Uh, uh, you yeah. got to, it's just like a teacher thing. No. Yeah. My students actually created a song for me and it, it's all oh. about when I'm not on coffee. So. Oh, well, there you go. So say, hey, there you go. That's the, that's that relationship thing, right? That's yes. Awesome. Uh, 110%. That's, that's fantastic. I love it. So mm-hmm. what, besides coffee, I mean, how have you been taking care of yourself this year? Is that out of left field? Uh, no. <laughs> or have time. you? Have you? Because I know, like, I mean, I'll put my hand up. First year, I did not take care of myself at all. I was a wreck. So uh-huh. have well, you? Well, okay. I can I can happily raise my hand and confidently tell you that I'm not a wreck. Oh. Okay. Um, honestly. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've I have allowed myself to say no to some things. Uh-huh. And did it kill me to do it? Yes. Oh, yes, it did. Mm-hmm. Um, but my, well, I don't want to call it a New Year's resolution there, but just like my new mentality going into 2019 and, and second semester mm-hmm. was when I'm when I'm asked to do something, a project or, or whatever it may be, if it's not a hell yeah, like if I'm not just yeah going crazy, excited about it, then I should probably say no. Because in my day, like my hours are booked already. So if I'm taking in another thing, I need to be able to let go of something or, Mm -hmm. you know, give less time to something else. So, and what I'm doing right now on my schedules, I'm, I'm very happy, you know, with that. So just finding that balance, um, and, and saying no has, has allowed me to not be burnt out. Uh, It doesn't mean I'm not tired some days, but yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think that that has been like my biggest saving grace. Well, she, she got it all figured out. No, 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 no. I'm just, <laughs> it doesn't mean that I say no every time and yeah. I've still taken on things that I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. But I'm guessing myself those are, in the butt for it, but <laughs> yeah. But those, those are your hell yes. Right. Well, exa- exactly. It's like, Oh, it could, it, 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 it kind of is a hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll take it on. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of a hell yeah. And there's our it's episode kind of title a- right there. <laughs> kind of a hell yeah. <laughs> right. It's just convincing myself that it isn't a hell yeah. That's where I need to be more yeah. stern with, with my own self-discipline. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. A little more decisive. Oh, I get it. I get it. So, um, so you got, uh, what is it? It's March. It is April, May, June. So th- oh, three months left. Wow. Wow. Oof. That that happened fast. Uh, you going to make it? Yes, because <laughs> there I- There was a pause. Just, there was a pause there, Sarah. <laughs> no, I'm really excited <laughs> for summer. I, I hopefully will be running or working with another summer camp. And uh-huh. I just love like, summer Sarah. I don't know if that makes any sense, but- Absolutely. Summer, summer Sarah is a wonderful person. Mm-hmm. And so- I, uh, I want to work with, because I'm in a high school right now, I'm excited to work with kind of the, the tinier, the tinier kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just really excited about that because, you know, I've done a, a whole semester with the, with the teens. So mm-hmm. I'm ready for a change so that I can be excited to get back to the teens in September. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, I always find, yeah, summer's a good time just to kind of 
switch your brain to something else, right? Yeah, for sure. Summer's and I there. like to be busy. I, I, I like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't take the summer off, at least like not yet, maybe. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I'm sure you'll find things to do. Oh, I'm not. I'm not worried at all. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> and well, then season yeah. three of my of my podcast will start after that. So yeah. just oh, like okay. lots so, of transitions. Wow. Season three already. Holy mm-hmm. smokes. Mm-hmm. Right on. Well, looking forward to that. And in fact, why don't we just, let's just uh, leave off with that. You do a podcast. So let's just, can you give me a little, little information on that or listeners? For sure. So my podcast is called Kesara Sara, and it is a bilingual podcast that I started when I was in teacher's college. um, Thanks to the wonderful uh, Derek Rodenizer and Chris Clough and Roland Chidiak. Mm -hmm. So Essentially, I I think I'm at like episode six, no, 76 right now. Wow. And uh, yeah, at the beginning in season one, it was all about learning as a pre-service teacher. Mm-hmm. Season two is learning as a first year actual real teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just have conversations with everyone and anyone who's willing to chat with me from students to teachers to principals, um, tech coaches, leaders, you name it. I've Mm -hmm. talked, I've spoken with them. So you you can find my podcast on SoundCloud, on iTunes, on Google, um, basically everywhere. Awesome. Any plans for season three? It sounds like you've kind of got like sort of season arcs going on here. What's, what's season three? Well, I don't want to just say that it's, you know, second year teacher, (laughs) Sarah, but (laughs) second year teaching, documenting Uh, all of, all of my years of teaching in a podcast, you know, why not? yeah. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Cool. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Well, Sarah, thanks yeah. so much for, uh, you know, finally connecting. This, this took us, what was this like attempt number three or four? <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's been a, it's been a try, but we are here and like, I'm just smiling ear to ear. So I'm really happy that we did this today, Shane. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, best of luck on season three and, you know, more importantly, uh, year two of teaching. <laughs> Woohoo! I love how yeah. we're already looking towards that. And- oh, these last three months, they ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Amazing. Thanks for that. <laughs> Optimistic. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. It's, you know, after 15 years, it does get a little easier. It really does. So I, I am forward looking to. forward to it. Yeah. Not easy, but easier. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Just t- temper expectations. <laughs> All right. Well, you take care. And uh, thank yeah. you so much. Right on. We'll see you out there in the Twitterverse. Sounds like a plan. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye bye. This week's episode of Ed is brought to you by the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. It's a network of Alberta made podcasts that cover every topic imaginable. And maybe if you're like Sarah and you're looking to stay healthy and focused, you could listen to the Healthy Lifestyle Design Podcast. It's a podcast all about the body, mind, and soul. You can join Pamela and her mom, Janet, as they talk about all the ways in which they've tried to design a healthy lifestyle. If you'd like to listen to that podcast, you can head over to healthylifestyledesign.transistor.fm or over to albertapodcastnetwork.com where you can find all the member podcasts. And if you want to get in touch or you'd like to be a guest on this show, you can email me at theedpodcast at gmail.com or hit me up on Twitter at theedpodcast. If you want to listen to more of Ed, you can head over to the website, theedpodcast.podbean.com, or find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the podcatcher of your choice. Just search up Ed Conversations. Ed can also be heard on Voice Ed Radio. It's 24-hour internet broadcasting devoted to the best ideas and education. Just head over to voiced.ca. So, on behalf of myself and Sarah, thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.